What's going on here today and tomorrow is a protest against the city council arbitrarily deciding to add fluoride to our drinking water, excluding no one. Everybody will be exposed to the fluoride. If you look at what Europe is saying, 96% of the countries in Europe, countries like Spain, Italy, Greece, England, and then on the other side of the world, even, even uh, the Chinese and Japanese said no to fluoride in their water. I wonder why. If it's so wonderful and so great, as Commissioner Fish keeps telling us, why is half the world saying no? Get it out. Why are there municipalities now saying, we made a mistake, we want out of this? Portland has been on the right side of this for years. The city council will not let you vote on it. They're going to do it on their own. And I don't think they're going to get five votes. They may get 4-1. Or maybe they will get five votes. Amanda Fritz is, is a question mark because she's running for office. And she may read some of the studies that people have been sending Sam Adams now for the last two weeks that have said, don't do this, this is not a good idea, this is toxic waste. I used to believe a long time ago that fluoride was just something that you put in your mouth to kind of slow down decay. That's what all Americans think, and they're wrong. All right, welcome to the program, A Growing Concern. Thanks to the uh, lone vet, Joe Walsh, we know what the program is going to be about tonight. We're going to talk about fluoride. I noticed today's paper, there was an article about it. Uh, it's going to get pretty contentious, and we need to talk about this and discuss these issues, pro and con, like they did on the uh, article there on the Oregonian, although I think we can dig a little deeper than they did. Uh, we're going to play uh, three more clips of the folks that were uh, at that rally demonstration, protest, however you want to call it, uh, you know, uh, four or five minutes each. And we also have in our studios, on my immediate right, we have Francis. What's the middle? <laughs> Quimps Miller. Quimps Miller. <laughs> Throws me every time. And you all know Scott Fernandez, a uh, recent mayoral candidate and a pit bull when it comes to Portland's water. And that's what we need because there's seems like every time we turn around, there's a threat against it. So... The videos that I'm going to be playing in a while, uh, I was really impressed. I go to these, these protests and I got to pull teeth, it seems like, to get people to talk to me sometimes. People were coming up, tugging me on the show. You know, they were wanting to talk. It was really an important issue to a lot of people. And they were very well informed. So we'll just, we'll start off with Scott. If you had to give one reason why you think, the most important reason why this is not should we shouldn't be doing it and there's a lot of really important reasons as we'll hear later on what would yours be um just to I get have, things rolling i have to give two one two, would right. be the chemicals but uh, a really important one is the loss of freedom of choice that's in mine the, and that yeah. we get this water that would be uh, filled with additional chemicals that we don't need and uh, we will not have any choice in, on what we can consume from bull run water and that's a big issue with me. That uh, and it's not just me, but it's the the children and the pets and stuff that will be uh, affected by this water. And it's it has no benefit at all mm -hmm. when it's fluoridated like that. And I know you're going to hear arguments from the other side that we need to have fluoridation, but we've done well as a city without it. They do. I, I do keep hearing, and I'm sure I saw in that article that Portland's got the worst cavities you know of a city and in, in the whole country and and uh you may want to address that uh, they definitely address it a little bit later in the in, in the interviews but what would your response to that be well we've seen and i just picked up a department of uh, human services report today that shows portland having a significantly uh fewer cavity problem than the rest of the state one in a hundred children need treatment where this report says uh, six out of a hundred in the rest of the state need treatment. So the Bull Run water seems to be serving the, the Portland metropolitan area. 900,000 people drink Bull Run water. It serves them very well as far as cavities go. Cavities are related to um, poor nutrition and sweets and other things that, the, that contribute to that and we can address that 
in other ways. We don't need to fluoridate our water through the uh, universal water system. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that uh, I did some research and a lot of, uh, what was the terminology used here? A lot of states, I mean a lot of countries, and there was a long list. A lot of countries rejected it outright, but more important to me is a lot of them have stopped once they started using it. So are you familiar with, 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 with that there? Absolutely. In fact, in Calgary last year, uh, they stopped putting fluoride in their water. And in Europe, all of Europe, only two countries fluoridate their water, uh, England and Ireland. Out of all of the other countries, no other country fluoridates. And that's not the total country either, as I, as I saw today, it's just parts of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, and in places like China, where they have a, a natural occurring fluoride, they have issues with fluoride, too much fluoride in the water. Absolutely. Fluorosis is an issue, and they actually have doctors who have to treat people for fluorosis. And didn't you say that you were, anecdotally, you were using it in such a way that uh, it was supposed to help and it didn't? Absolutely. In fact, um, my own personal experience is that I was using a concentrated prescription dose of fluoride toothpaste for some weak enamel issues. And uh, I had been using it for almost two years. And uh, my partner asked me to, to stop using it. She was concerned about fluoride. I stopped using it. And within five months, and by eating more greens and whole, uh, whole grains, my, uh, my weak enamel completely reversed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, what you say, you used it on there, and uh, a lot of the folks there said that it's, it's a good idea to use it topically, but to, to, uh, to flush the whole system with it, it, does, it doesn't make any sense. And you being a biologist, that, you could probably explain why that is. Right, because we have seen the effects of fluoride when it's taken in, when you drink it through water and, and uh, through that uh, way to do it. Um, it does affect, have negative effect on the brain and on the... Uh, the kidneys and in other tissues, and in especially the bones. It will change the bone structure over time and it just does not have a good effect on that part of the anatomy. Right, like one woman was saying how if it affects your teeth, it affects your bones. Mm -hmm. And that, ma that makes a lot of sense. That uh, yeah. uh, it seems to me like, you know, I'm not, like Joe, he was ready to fire the, the mayor. I'm not ready to go to that extreme yet, but it seems like they're focused on a little bit and there's so much more to this issue people are sending them uh, you probably both know people that are sending them emails with uh, research and things on there but they went ahead and voted yes are they going to vote yes anyway and uh, um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna begin to start sending them some stuff too you know there's there's a website called uh, was it uh, fluoride action network mm -hmm. and it's fluoride alert dot org fluoride alert dot org slash videos dot ASPX fluoride alert dot org then slash videos and dot ASPX I don't know what that means but there's a bunch of videos on this that are really important one of them is Ralph Nader who was addressing what Scott was talking about at the beginning of the program how uh, people need to vote on these things you know when you're m mass medicating people people need to vote on this and it's uh, to me that is my biggest issue with this whole thing it isn't a fluoride issue it's a choice and democracy issue mm -hmm. I think another thing to to think about is also uh, Portland and Oregon in particular likes to consider itself a state and a city that's an environmental leader of the rest of the country mm -hmm. and by putting synthetic fluoride that is a byproduct from industrial waste making fertilizer uh, into and aluminum, our and aluminum right. into our water. By doing that, we are actually sanctioning. We are actually supporting uh, industrial waste byproducts. We are actually saying to industries, it's okay if you make products and you make hazardous byproducts. We're okay with that because we're buying it and we're putting it on our water. So it's really important that Portland, in particular. Uh, be a leader, a true leader in the environmental movement and not support uh, uh, companies that create hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. Well, we have been an environmental leader for years and we've turned this down three times. Now all of a sudden our city council are not the environmental leaders, but there was plenty of people down there at the, at the rally the other day that are environmental leaders that, that want to um, at least have a discussion about this. Mm -hmm. And uh, Scott, I didn't notice you there. You must have been busy that day. But uh, yeah, I was. I was at both of them this week. Oh, I, I missed you. Yeah. I got the, I got there a little late, but yeah. uh, there was a lot of folks there, and and uh, I, I couldn't believe how well informed they all are. Yeah, this has really touched a nerve within the city, and 
people that are very well informed are having the other side. It seems to be calling us crackpots for having the position that we have. But we've taken a lot of time and energy over the years to inform ourselves uh, scientifically and, and otherwise that this is a very serious issue that that has a huge ramification if it goes through, especially just with three people or five people deciding our fate. And they're also deciding our future because they're going to force a, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, we're going to have to put this before the people now, referendum, mm -hmm. which brings it up. Uh, there's, there's one way to do it with a referendum, but you're working with an organization that's doing it a different way? So Clean Water Portland is uh, actually, they already have submitted a ballot draft which means that uh, we will have two years to get 30,000 signatures, which I think will be very easy to do. And at that point, it will indeed become a vote for the city. And um, as you know, Amanda Fritz has basically come out saying that she wants the people to vote on it. And when I spoke with a representative from her office today, he explained that uh, Amanda feels that this issue has been voted on by the people three times already in Portland, and at this point she feels that it's appropriate that that same thing happen again. Mm -hmm. There was a fellow with a loudspeaker that was talking there at the very end, and I, I missed that particular point, but he listed the percentage that it was, would, uh, people voted against it, and the last one it was, you know, pretty close to 50%. Mm. So apparently, you know, the... the uh, the powers that want to get this passed are, are learning how to work the media a little bit better. Maybe they just got more money. But, uh, you know, it, 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 if, if we vote on it and it passes, then we're just going to have to live with that. And uh, like some pe folks were saying down there, you can't really screen that out with the, with the typical uh, filters. And you might be able to address that before we go to the next video. Uh, what, what is the options if you don't want to be drinking this water? Um, there isn't any. And oh. <laughs> the, the people say, well, we can filter it out. Well, that's, it's not effective, but it's not an absolute solution. So you don't have any choice. You can't boil it out. You can't do anything other than drink it, and you come up with fluoride. What about reverse osmosis? That can be effective to a certain percentage, but it will not be absolute, no matter what. Because if water can get through, the fluoride molecules can get through also. So they're pretty small, then. Right. And I did want to ask, or add one thing, is that not only is this sourced from the aluminum and fertilizer industry, but now we're seeing it as a byproduct of the nuclear industry. And oh we've gosh. seen that coming out of uh, South Africa. So that is one of the contaminants that I'm really fearful of. We have contamination uh, acknowledged uh, through lead and arsenic and copper and radioactive materials coming through this stuff. Because it's not a, fit, a pharmaceutical grade byproduct, it is an industrial grade byproduct. So it's not refined at all then? No, it's not as good as the stuff that goes through in the toothpastes, and even that is kind of sketchy. And can I add sure. something? Is uh, the CDC actually has come out and said that uh, infants, new, brand new babies, absolutely should not have fluoridated water mixed in with their formula. And part of the issue here is. Uh, this campaign going on, they're talking about minorities and uh, poor people and how, uh, you know, dental problems are an issue. But the thing is, is that new parents who cannot afford reverse osmosis machines or carrying gallons and upon gallons of water on the bus to their homes to purchase uh, bottled water, which they cannot afford, actually puts these poor people at a greater disadvantage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can you address the, the, if, if it, the if a woman drinks the water and is nursing, does it make it through to the, to the infant that way? It can, and breast milk has a significantly lower uh, threshold of, of fluoride naturally than, than the water would have. And that's one thing I wanted to say also is that EPA standards are based on an adult 150-pound human. Mm -hmm. And so the children, which have different physiological uh, actions going on within their body, uh, this this level of fluoride has a negative effect on them because they're there's a smaller person and they have greater activity within their cells mm -hmm. So this is not good for children and pets and and pregnant women. In You're fact right. the uh, the EPA uh, Kathleen Thiessen T-H-E-I-S-S-E-N who uh, is a senior scientist in um, in Tennessee uh, actually did a report that she rep she presented to the Water Bureau in Los Angeles in 2007. And in that Water 
in that uh, in that presentation, it shows that for an infant to have no uh, negative effects from uh, fluoridated water, it must be. Uh, now the EPA signs off at uh, 0 0.06, the CDC is 0 0.07. For there to be no effect to an infant, it has to be 0 0.005 parts per million, which is quite a significant number, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So. Why did they? Did, does LA fluoridate, fluoridate the water? You know, I think they do. <laughs> I think she's right. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Well, we've been talking for a while. We've got some other folks here, three or four more of the people that were down there at that rally the other day. And uh, we'll run that. It's about four or five minutes long. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll take a cue from some of the... There'll be some repetition here, but it's nice to know, and it's good to know, I should say, that people uh, out there are doing their homework. And uh, we'll listen to a few of them right now. Um, my name is Kelsey Dunlap. I'm currently an unemployed chemistry teacher. I think one thing that people don't understand is that the fluoride that they're putting in our water is actually an industrial waste product. Um, and I think that we should not have industrial waste products in our water. Um, I use a filter to filter those things out. Um, and a regular water filter won't filter fluoride out. Um, and I think it also comes down to choice. People talk about um, how you know the poor children don't have access to proper dental care um, but they do have fluoride rinses with Portland Public Schools um, which is a rinse you're not bringing it into your body um, everyone deserves to have a choice okay so since people have voted in the 1980s all kinds of very high level organizations have actually pulled down the levels of recommended fluoride treatments. So now it's it, it was one point per million, sorry, 1.0 per million, and now it's half per million, and they keep lowering it and lowering it and lowering it as they find detrimental effects. Who is finding the effects? Uh, different scientists CDC. throughout the world. CDC, exactly, EPA. Um, that that it, it's really, it's not difficult to find this out. We just have to look. Um, what I think we do need to look is where is this money coming from to push this suddenly from the city council? They're not being open with their sources of funding, why they're choosing to do this now. Um, frankly, I think at the bare minimum, this needs to be a choice for the people. Also, a lot of European countries do not use fluoride in their water. And we still have to think about our future generation to see, you know, what is good for them and what is bad. Why poison them? Why are we poisoning people? That is my question. When there are studies out there, Harvard just did a study and came out saying that fluoride is very bad for a kid's IQ. Why are we dumbing down our nation? Her neurological system is still developing. As far as I'm concerned, she doesn't need any fluoride topically or ingested. Neither do we. Have you made any studies of this? My own personal scientific studies? No, but I can read the ones through the CDC, the Harvard, and all of the other ones. You don't have to be a scientist to be able to read. So there is a lot of information out there already. There is a ton of information available already. Problem is, you got to stop looking at the information that's provided to you via your television and magazines, because that's all bullshit. Well, there's a reason your tube of Crest says harmful if swallowed. So, and then they want to put it in the water. This is an industrial waste component trucked in from Florida and put into the Bull Run watershed. And whether, whether you think it helps your cavities or not, it's, we're gonna be flushing it down the toilets. Every restaurant in Portland that prepares food will be using it. You won't be able to escape it. So I really oppose and resent that they're forcing me and my family to put a prescription-only drug, chemical, into my water. Um, if they're worried about cavities are on the increase, cavities have been linked to poverty. We know we have exploding population of hungry children in Oregon. So why don't we spend that $5 million feeding them, give them some nourishment, a toothbrush maybe, schools, instead of putting this chemical in the water. Do your research and take the time to look. There are two sources that this type of fluoride um, comes from. One is mostly 80% of it comes out of a fertilizer plant in Florida, and it's trucked all over the country, and it's people who handle it have to wear hazmat suits. 
And then the other uh, place it comes from is the aluminum industry. Now these two industries, when they do their business and they produce this hydrofluorosilic acid, it is illegal for them to just dump it into the water because it is classified as a toxic waste. So they just truck it and say repackage it as a public health tool and then legally put it into the water. It's a known toxin to fish. Um, it's a bioaccumulator in your body. The National Research Council has said repeatedly it's an um, endocrine disruptor in your brain. So it makes no sense to me at all. Keep the water clean and pure. I spend enough time trying to get healthy and then they're going to wreck it all by dumping this in the water. All right, that went quick. Well, we got a whole list of things we could go to from there. You know, that last, that last one is the, the fish. Uh, are you familiar with uh, the effects it has on fish? Right, and one of the ways they, they determined that it was negative uh, impact on the salmon is that there used to be a um, aluminum smelter up near the Dalles. And as the salmon migrated past there, they would become lethargic and have problems moving past that. And they finally determined that it was fluoride coming in off of the aluminum smelter. And um, so that has since dis uh, stopped, the smelter sim stopped, so the, the uh, salmon have a better passage. But this whole thing, as we go through this process with adding fluoride to our water, it will, much of it will end up in the sewer system and end up being discharged out in the Columbia, and this is not helpful. So yeah, it will have an impact on the fish. And we do see um, fetal development in frogs and amphibians as being very negative too, as an indicator that this is not helpful. I would think even more so with fish because their 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 skin is more more semi permeable or whatever more of a membrane than a fish with scales and it, it would they would absorb it completely, right, and it affects um, the gills and the, the output there and input there. So it's not good. So it's it's not a winner in any way at all. You know, I'm trying to think back over what some of them folks say. The nursing mother, you know, and this bullshit. I mean, you know that that you know. Two words you could uh, break this down makes me kind of wonder why it is being passed. And I know the camera person was just asking, and this seems like a no-brainer. Uh, it just seems to me that the that the uh, if they want to pass it, they would at least hold more discussion. And the only discussion they're going to have is what? It was going to be this week and it's going to be next week? You might be able to so, talk about that. So uh, there will be a hearing on September 6th and ah. at 2 p.m. at City Hall on the second floor in council chambers. And at that point, they will listen to citizens discuss this issue. And I'm sure there will be people from both sides from of both the debate. Sides. Absolutely. And so at that point, um, they will be discussing that. And, and that is actually, um, again, from Amanda Fritz's office. She has not made up her mind. And it looks like she is probably not even going to announce her, her position on either side until either uh, during the council hearing or afterwards. Have we heard from Saltzman at all? Because I have a question. So He's been Amanda very Fritz quiet. Fritz and Saltzman are the only two that are, no matter what they do, it would pass three to five. So, so it's hard to say what they would do. You know, I was going over what the paper here is, has to say, and they give in support and in opposition. Uh, this is fluoridation saves money. Saves money in, in what way? Do you have any idea why they're saying that? Because uh, I, I encourage people no. to read the paper because I don't. I'm not really able to read it too well right now. It's just last minute, but and there's a there's a lot of reasons why that those those people were talking about. Uh, to me, the the fact is that they're they're. Um, to me, it's a kind of a corporate coup because they make this stuff as a, it's a byproduct. And uh, they can't put it in the water. They can't get rid of it and flush it anywhere or dilute it. So they end up selling it to cities and they put it in the water. Uh, it just seems to me, boy, what a deal. I mean, uh, there's cities all over this country that, that, are, that are allowing this to happen that are, uh, personally, I don't remember, uh, maybe it, it, I didn't notice whether the, the cities that are doing it have voted. Do either of you know if the, the people have voted on this or if it has just been passed? Generally, they vote on it, like uh, the Tualatin Valley Water District, part of their district has voted on it and part of it has not voted on it or voted against it. So we do see it being voted on and that happens out there and they drink a lot of Bull Run water. So they're getting their own fluorid, they're fluoridating, 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 
adding fluoridation themselves out there mm -hmm. and not through our system. And that's going to be one of the big problems that if Portland fluoridates its water, it will be fluoridated up at a place called Lusted Hill, which is just this side of the Sandy River. And then it'll be universal throughout the whole system. And there are some wholesale customers that are complaining already that they don't want fluoride in their water, yet there'll be no way to remove it once it gets in at, at the Lusted Hill input. And so I that could be a problem for Portland City Council. Mm -hmm. And another thing is uh, they've had issues with a lot of things over their water, and I understand it's going to cost, I forget who it was, I think it was uh, the, the loan vet at the very beginning, five thousand or five million dollars to build the to build the plant and six hundred thousand dollars a year to maintain it something to that effect yeah and those are generally underestimates always mm -hmm. and they always go up and they will always increase uh, the cost to the um, to the rate payer and we're getting hit already um, this year was eight percent in the past it's been double digit in our just our water rates and so they will continue to go up added with this cost. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think there's two important points to remember. Uh, Portland has some of the finest water in the country. In fact, in the world. There's none better. Uh, mm -hmm. We have our clean, wonderful Bull Run water. And some people will argue, well, you know, there are some chemicals that are put in the water. So, you know, why are you arguing against this chemical? The, the reason we're arguing against that is because the other chemicals that are put in the water are for the water itself, for making it drinkable. Putting fluoride in the water does nothing to make the water more drinkable at all. And in terms of cost, uh, another thing we have to think about is this. 70% of our country has fluoridated water, yet 41% of kids between the ages of 12 to 15 have some form of dental fluorosis, whether it be questionable or severe. Severe meaning that it's permanent long-term damage. And so what happens is, is that do we really want 41% of Portland's kids to have dental fluorosis, which is going to cost us money, especially the state that's going to have to go in and for poor families have to pay for those costs to treat the dental fluorosis. So it is going to cost us more money in the end. Mm -hmm. So what So what you're saying sounds like we'll be trading uh, cavities for fluorosis. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that particularly bothers me, and I think many people in this movement, is that there are other ways to deal with tooth decay and dental caries. There's uh, this, the solution with the water is a Band-Aid and not a very good one at that. There's been plenty of, sh as, as I've learned from my own experience, even using concentrated fluoride, that it is not as helpful as perhaps other outlets, for instance, nutrition or addressing um, the diets of, of particularly people who have less money and making sure their children have proper nutrition. Um, we also already have in place for kids a SWISH program. I think that's kind of the fun name for it. But kids right. in school mm -hmm. already take a cup of water that, remember, fluoride is most effective when it's topical, not ingested. Mm -hmm. They already do a program where they it's topically put on by swishing and they spit it out. So my question is, well, if the SWISH program isn't working, how do you think drinking <laughs> fluoridated <laughs> water is going to work? Clearly, there needs to be, if fluoride is really what they want to use, a better way and a more direct approach to dealing with uh, dental dental issues. Mm -hmm. like, to, you know, like you say, the uh, mouthwash or toothpaste. Absolutely. And as right. one person, maybe it was that last uh, clip, I don't remember, they held up a, a, a thing of toothpaste and, you know, says, do not swallow. Well, you know, if you're not supposed to swallow the stuff in toothpaste, obviously it's probably more concentrated, but uh, I do believe that, it, doesn't this stuff accumulate? It does accumulate. And that's then a that's real bottom line to me, I would think. And over a period of years, that's where it really begins to affect the bones in that it starts to decalcify the bones and you have more uh, risk of breakage. Mm -hmm. So what about these cities that have been doing this for years? I mean, aren't, isn't there anybody watching and, and uh, monitoring this at all? Well, I mean, You can't speak for other cities, but if you, you know any studies. One of the excuses that they use is that their source of fluoride may come from other areas in their diet and that they cannot just blame it on water. Yet you see um, the high concentrations of their, in their diet are, will be coming from their water. Mm -hmm. and the consistency of it and the way that it's spread throughout the system internally 
um, it does have a negative effect over time. And you do have a control group, cities that don't have it. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. So. Well, and another thing you have to think about is particularly low income uh, families and minorities, minority families tend to have higher prevalences of certain diseases such as kidney disease, diabetes, um, asthma, rheumatic diseases, and uh, there is plenty of science uh, to show that people with diabetes and kidney problems absolutely should not be drinking fluoridated water, that they should not have extra fluoride in their systems. And so are we uh, then going to say, well, basically everyone in Oregon should have fluoridated water, but uh, sorry to you guys who have kidney problems or diabetes or um, who are infants. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we don't care. It's just, you know, for the rest of you. It seems like it's really not really for all of our citizens. Yeah, sacrifice zone, so to speak. Right. So, well, I think we're, we're down over halfway through the program. We got another clip. We'll listen to about another four minutes of people talking. Uh, I think this might have been one of my favorites. I can't remember. They're all so good. So we'll, we'll go into this one and then we'll come back. Forced fluoridation is really amounts to forced uh, prescriptions by politicians. So it's they're medicating the population and they're really being paid to do it. The fluoride industry has a lot of money and they're actually, they're, I don't want to say the word corrupting, but they're using campaign donations to get the city hall when they couldn't get the people to vote for this in three elections so far. They've, it's been voted down, so now they're going through the back door and they're going after the city hall. What we'd like to do is have a public debate because we believe that uh, about 99% of the facts line up on the side against fluoridation, especially with the new evidence coming out, new research. Harvard published their study showing a 500% increase in cancer in boys drinking fluoridated water. The CDC has now come out and said that we shouldn't mix infant formula with fluoridated water because of uh, damage to infants. And then there are studies uh, coming out of China, lower IQ from people drinking fluoridated water, thyroid problems. It's, it's adding up to mass toxification. And uh, if you look here, this is the product, or one of the products, and, and um, this is maybe fatal if swallowed, harmful if inhaled. On here it says, at the last word, do not swallow. Above that it says, contact a poison control center right away if you happen to swallow this product. So that's because of the fluoride? Yeah, the fluoride is the poison. Thank you. The lethal dose of fluoride is five grams. It's cumulative over a lifetime. So if you drink about 5,000 liters of optimally fluoridated water, in theory, you're dead. Okay, now you can be sick along the way. So how much do people drink and how do you dose them? Supposedly this is good for our teeth and there are some serious questions there because in Europe they don't fluoridate water and they have as good a dental health as we do. But assuming you like it and you think it's good for your teeth, how much should you drink? If you're a construction worker outside, you're drinking a lot more water than an office worker who's sitting inside. When do you get to 5,000 liters? It's a question. How do you, there is no way to optimally medicate people with drinking water. It's wrong too, it, it takes away and um, which brings me back to the other thing. Put this to a public vote, put it to a public hearing. Don't do this behind the scenes, back door deals. But one thing that people aren't, don't seem to be addressing very thoroughly in this whole debate is, is, is the nutrition aspect of this. What, how does nutrition uh, contribute to oral health? And there's a, a, a book called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by a doctor named Weston A. Price. And he's done a thorough, very thorough study. On, ex exactly. And he's done a very thorough uh, study about the, the, uh, the effects of good whole, whole nutrient-dense foods on oral health. And that's something that's not addressed at all. So yeah, that when they say poverty is that the people with poor people have worse oral health, it's a lot of what they're eating. They're eating a lot of processed foods and a lot of sugar, a lot of corn syrup and stuff like that. And I don't think that's exactly been... Exactly right. That's yeah. a key point. Okay, Weston Price uh, was a dentist back in the... Uh, it, it did some studies back in the 20s and 30s on... Uh, had, uh, groups of people around the world that had, had traditional diets that, uh, and had uh, excellent teeth. 
he had to go through a, a, a number of mouths, uh, uh, scraping away a, a green plaque uh, uh, from teeth to, uh, to uh, examine them, and he found no uh, uh, decay underneath. Uh, uh, He's, uh, in his studies, he found that uh, there are certain things common in the various diets that uh, prevented tooth decay. It's a nutritional disease. All right, we're back. That's a good place to take off. That whole concept of the traditional diets, you know, peeling back the green teeth and there'd be no tooth decay underneath, and here we have people that are completely clean, get their teeth cleaned, you know, Six, every six months deep cleans and all that and and they got tooth decay you know well, you kind of wonder what that's all about and it, it gets down to nutrition yes it does absolutely I was just I didn't catch the uh, the book there I put that up there and I hope folks out there in TV land caught that the guy's name was Weston Price you Weston remember the name Price. of the book absolutely um no, you spoke too soon, huh? <laughs> spoke too soon. Uh, but he was a pioneer, and he was actually considered a quack himself at the time. And his whole thing was he went, it, he was trying to figure out what was going on with citizens in terms of tooth decay. And so he traveled all around the world, particularly to aboriginal communities. And what he found time and time again were people with beautiful, beautiful teeth. And these were people who were eating, say, some cultures were eating primarily meat, whereas some cultures were eating primarily vegetables. But the one consistent thing he found was their teeth looked beautiful, they were nice, wide, great smiles, whereas other places like, for instance, England, where they had high amounts of refined foods, sugars, mm. and other things like that, there was a much higher prevalence of tooth decay. And what was particularly interesting that he noted was that you could have um, uh, an aboriginal person who typically ate a diet, their, their, their traditional diet of primarily meat or vegetables or whatever, and they could then go into a city and their child would eat primarily refined foods. Or they would start eating themselves primarily refined foods once they moved. And what they found is the children born to these parents who had changed their diets all of a sudden had dental problems, including including, including crowded teeth and um, cavities. So it's diet definitely can very much play a role. Mm -hmm. That could be all oh, your microphones flipped over again. Oh, there. thank you. There we go. Yeah, that, that would be pretty easy to, to uh, test in this country. Like during the 60s, they brought in the Cambodians and the Vietnamese, who were all agrarian, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, and I imagine they, that could have been traced back then. They could have done a really easy study right there. I, I, don't, I'm, I don't recall that anybody did that. It just seems to me that, uh, I think you've used the word Band-Aid before, this, this, this is a, uh, you both probably have. Uh, what we need to what we need to do is uh, deal with the issue head on through nutrition and maybe topical use of fluoride, but the cities just opt out of do it the easy way. It seems like to me, uh, do it the easy way and and flush the fluoride in there and think you have the problem solved. Right, and this is going to have as we were talking during the break. Uh, this is going to have a negative effect on the business community, especially. And we we're talking about the microbrew people and how this is not going to be holding their beer harmless. It will have a negative effect on when the chemical exposure to their beers. And it, there won't be any way to remove this effectively. Well, and which can then affect our Portland economy. And, you know, we are also having to think about the uh, business people who are involved in natural food industries or organic products. We have many business people in this, in this town who uh, utilize that stuff. How, for instance, if you go to a New Seasons or a food front, how are they going to water their vegetables using synthetically fluoridated water. So are they going to have to buy expensive osmosis uh, machines that are not going to fully take care of the problem, use twice the amount of the water, and therefore increase their bills? Or are they going to have to buy the water from somewhere else, which will then involve, uh, you know, more, more, more cost country travel, and which will raise gas prices and force them to pay for more water? So it's not just um, the citizens having a right to have a vote. We're talking about affecting businesses. We're talking about um, affecting all kinds of people in this situation. Right. And... Um as we've talked through the community over the last few years about other issues with the water situation in Portland, we've found that there are a lot of uh, microbrew people that are located here specifically for the good, for the clean water, water of Bull Run. They 
didn't want to go any other place because of the differences in water. But one of the things we we're also talking about during the break is that there are a lot of people now, especially Parks Bureau, who is really emphasizing community gardens and, and the parks and, and their different areas and, and neighborhood associations that are supporting that. So what they'll be doing then is, is uh, using the water that will be fluoridated to water these gardens and then that will be taken up by the plants and there'll be another exposure of fluoride who, to who's ever eating that, that product, uh, vegetables or whatever. So that's another thing. I hadn't thought about that. So the, the, the plants will absorb this right. and it'll be in the lettuce or the spinach or broccoli or whatever it is. Right. In, in, what, in what concentrations? It depends on what makes it through the soil and, and is gone in the, uh, in the uptake, but the water will eventually make its way into the plants, definitely. Which will force farmers, local farmers here, who are in Portland proper, to have to use fluoridated water, especially ones that are organic farmers or natural farmers. Mm -hmm. They will not necessarily be able to, as far as I know, I don't, I, I, I'm not quoting a fact here, but as far as I know, I'm not sure how labeling organic with fluoridated water works, but it will definitely um, decrease the, the level of how organic mm -hmm. the produce that comes from here will be. Depends on the concentrations and how much it accumulates, I guess. Absolutely. Right. So and what we've seen like in a city like Boulder, Colorado, that they've had an incident or two of, of identifying contamination of arsenic and uh, mercury and lead in their, uh, the solution that they use for fluoridation. So we know that it does come through and it has been uh, identified as such. Mm -hmm. And it, that way these plants could be uptaking those molecules too. I see. And it wouldn't be good. I think we got one more clip. We'll, we'll, we'll jump into that, then maybe we can get some phone calls as well here in a little bit. Uh, we can talk about this for all night, but I wouldn't mind hearing from some of the viewers out there as well. So uh, we'll uh, play the last clip. Now, we're being told that we need to fluoridate our water to protect our children's teeth, and I, I find that an unfathomable argument. It's already known that 40% of children in the U.S. have damaged teeth due to excess fluoride. Um, your teeth are a window to your bones. If your teeth are damaged, your bones are getting damaged as well. Only 70% of cities still have fluoridated water in the U.S. and the cities that have taken fluoridation out of their water have, have seen a decrease in cavity rates in children. Cavities are a function of dental hygiene, uh, a healthy diet, and a healthy pH in the body. So putting a neurotoxin in your body isn't going to help. And that's, that, that is why I believe the cavity rates decline when they take it out of the water because the, the body is not having to deal with that additional toxicity in it and it's better able to handle um, what it needs to keep healthy teeth. So you're saying that uh, topically it's a good idea possibly, but... Topically it's a parental choice. I would prefer to, to have the, the healthy diet, the healthy pH, um, dental hygiene, but topically it can be a useful tool. And that's why the city of Portland already provides that to the children. Making all of us ingest a neurotoxin because some of our children have cavities is like making the entire city drink diet soda because we have a problem with obesity with some of our children. My drinking diet soda is not going to help that child next door. Me being a healthy example of a healthy life, healthy food, healthy pH, that might help that child. <laughs> And the other thing, I don't know, I'm sure you've heard about the Harvard University study that fluoride significantly lowers IQ in children. Um, and I just read something on the web today because I'd, I'd heard 99% of this is going to end up just going downstream right. anyway. Only so I thought, what about the fish? Of the water is fish, it turns out, it's a neurotoxin to fish as well as other animals, and including people. And um, they have trouble migrating. It affects their ability to migrate when they've been exposed to this toxin. And that means 99% of the water gets uh, flushed away. It's used for gardening, it's used for showering, for flushing the toilet. And so as an efficiency, really, you're talking about, you know, wasting 99% of whatever you're trying to do. And so... I think from an efficiency point of view, it's not very efficient. If you want to spend that money, then you can do a swish and spit you know, program in the school for little kids if they choose to sign up for it. But to force the whole city to uh, have that in their water, and then you know, now you're watering your plants with fluoride, and 
uh, using it to make beer and you know everything else that you do with it so I, I think it's a bad it's a bad idea and it should be voted on by the people all right welcome back I'm just trying to find it in my notes here uh, fluoride is used is the active ingredient in Prozac? Absolutely. I think it's eight, 17 or 18 percent. Mm -hmm. And it was something else, it's too. I'm not finding it anywhere mm -hmm. here. But it was also uh, used in, in one other thing as well. And uh, if you go online, you find all kinds of crazy things on the Internet. And some of them could be true. I know Ralph Nader and the thing he says when we have to make it, take the vote, he says that unfortunately a lot of people make really extravagant claims. And it gets, you know, the, the crazy... Uh, name put on people so we got to be careful uh, I, you know on some of the, some of those statistics that she just talked about I didn't get a chance to ask her where she got them but we need to be careful about what we use but uh, you go online and there's there's uh, whole pages of of uh, people that are saying the Nazis used this to dumb people down one one person was saying that Thatcher used it to help dumb down the Irish I don't know if any of this is true but but yeah you know, we need to spend time going through all this because this is going to go to a vote eventually if they pass it it absolutely will i believe people need to be informed and i think that's another uh consideration that also hasn't brought up been brought up is that there are a number of medications that actually already use fluoride so people are already un unfortunately swallowing fluoride and so if you combine medications with fluoride with toothpaste with fluoride with water with fluoride um you know you have basically people you're going to start seeing fluorosis in high numbers here and you know we have to keep in mind again this is synthetic fluorosis there is nothing natural about it in fact randy leonard said the other day at city hall that fluoride is natural and unfortunately uh, my question to him would be how are how is he supposed to make decisions for our city when he does not even know that not all forms of fluoride are natural i think i'm getting a high sign that we have phone calls already <coughs> We haven't even put up the number yet, so if we got phone calls, we'll put them up. Hello, first caller, you're on the air. We might have lost him. Well, it's not working, so the number, there's the number, 288-4448. And if folks want to call in and make questions or comments, or if you think this is a good idea, that'd be great, because we need to get a discussion going. Everybody here tonight is pretty much against doing this at least to the degree or even more than that but it needs to be discussed at least to that you know to that degree that people need to talk about it can't just uh, ma wave your magic wand three out of five or four out of five or whatever and make and implement this and then let the people uh take it upon themselves the damage it causes and 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 having to to uh, move ahead and and to try to try to change that so hopefully folks will get online here and we can we can get a discussion going with viewers. Well, and I think the city council, one of the points that I did want to make was the city council needs to realize that they would not be where they are if we did not vote them in, which proves that the voting process works. So I believe that they can trust that if we voted for them to be on our city council, we can they can trust that we will have um, enough information and enough wit to be able to vote on this issue. Mm -hmm. Call. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. We uh, first caller. You're on the air. I guess we're having some bumps on the phones. Hello. We got. Oh, hello. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Can you hear us? Uh, I can barely hear you. Yeah, we can hear you too, and you have some kind of other sound. Okay. What I'm going to do then is I'll go ahead and uh, uh, say what I called to say. I. Uh, uh, I've been monitoring the, the local uh, network news on this issue, and uh, I find that their, their reporting of the opposition um, is kind of limited to the, uh, the brain thing. And what I did, what I started doing was calling uh, the, the local network stations and uh, asking them to uh, please report on whether the fluoride that, will be, that is proposed to be added is pharmaceutical grade or industrial grade. Uh, I haven't seen any reporting on that. I also asked, uh, you know, to to look into to report on uh, what the other effects, other than the brain issues, such as the bioaccumulative issues that your guests were talking about, and the number of other uh, related issues. And what I'm thinking is, uh, 
in addition to the city council being bought by by the uh, the fluoride interest that possibly um, the revenue could be streaming into the local news stations also uh, in the form of commercial time or something like that to where the news is uh, technically two-sided uh, pro and con but the con side is kind of uh, uh, laughed off uh, it's kind of in, in the way that the, the John Birchers used to do with the uh, uh, fluoride is a communist plot thing and that that used to be brought up all the time uh, when fluoride uh, was was uh, proposed and uh, you get uh, people jumping up and down saying oh no fluoride's a communist plot and everyone starts laughing and everything but uh, so far Portland has been doing really well keeping uh, fluoride out of their water and I hope uh, we defeat this one this round uh, too. Thank you again for your show and I hope you get the phones fixed. We're working on it. <laughs> Thank you. As usual, we got callers that come in and think outside the box, as did the people there at the at the rally there. <clears throat> We're having some real issues with that phone. I don't know what the problem with it is, but hopefully they'll get that fixed because I know we got a <clears throat> excuse me. I know we got a couple other folks that want to kind of come in and, and add to the mix here. So if we get the next one up, we'll do that next here. Just to answer his question, it sure. will not be pharmaceutical grade. It will be industrial grade, and it will have contaminants in it, and they do allow for contamination in it. Very small amounts, but it will be. I never made that distinction. It's pharmaceutical versus versus industrial. Pharmaceutical is more refined, I take it, then. Absolutely. Yeah, it goes through a higher screening process, and more of the contaminants are removed, but even that is not contaminant-free. So it really isn't an issue of fluoride, succinctly or specifically, but fluoride, which has issues, and the contaminants as well. Exactly. Well, and we must remember, too, that the FDA has not actually signed off on fluoride, uh, sp especially synthetic fluoride, being a uh, way to prevent disease and dental problems. So the FDA has not signed off on it yet. So after all these years, they haven't signed off on it yet? No. I see. Well, we'll get the For next For fluoridating time. the water, to be right. clear. To, to be clear. So we'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll get the next caller up. Next caller. Hello? All right, a clear voice. Great. You're on the air. Welcome to the program. Hello. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Can you hear us? Wow, this is a bad, bad <laughs> connection. Yeah, we've been having issues with the, the new phone system. So as with new technology, it's uh, not working too good. We got the techs in there looking it over. Uh, can you hear us at all? I, it sounds kind of like you're in a tunnel, but I did have a couple things I wanted to say. All right, you're going ahead and give us your give us your comment. Well, I didn't get to catch the first part of your program, but I've been concerned about this issue in the last couple of weeks. I've been hearing about it, and I grew up in Portland in the Portland public school system, uh, child of the '60s and '70s, and I just don't understand why they don't let people do the continue to do the swish and spit method. My mom was telling me yesterday she remembers she had to sign off. They have the option to have their child do it or not, so. Real simple. I can't imagine it costing any more than changing the whole water system. Um, also, I, what brought to mind when I was a young gal, I used to work for a Native American organization, and they studied, uh, you know, the dioxins and toxins in the Columbia River, and the organization is still around today. And I know that they have spent millions of dollars studying toxins and dioxins in the Columbia River. The federal government has given money to do this. And if there's any other tributaries around the country where fluoride is being used and there's studies that have been done through Native American organizations and federal funding that they can prove this is a detriment to the, to the fish, that should put the halt on it right away. Well, the Endangered Species Act, yes. Yeah. So. I think somebody needs to be looking at the native angle on this because uh, there's only so much you can get away with in our waters when it comes down to fish. All right. Well, I appreciate the comment. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with us. Okay. All right. All right. We got about four minutes, and we have one more call. We'll try the we'll try the last call, then we'll sum up here. Uh, next caller, you're on the air. We hope. I have a question for the panel. All right. I'm not quite sure if I'm mistaken or not, but is there a tie between fluorine and sweet water disease? 
Twitch uh, eventually got called diabetes. In the 1800s, there was a problem that happened like that. Could that question be answered? All right. Well, we'll do the we'll do our best. Uh, I've never heard of sweet water disease. Which is also called diabetes. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of the link. Um, offhand, I can't. I don't think that there is. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not familiar with that at all. Are you familiar with that? Uh, you know, that's uh, new information to me. Um, my only comment is on that is that we certainly know that there is a link between diabetes and nutrition or nutritional deficiencies. Oh, yeah, look, look at the poor nutrition on the reservations and, and how bad they, you know, what, 30, 40 percent? It's, it's up pretty high anyway. Well, actually, the reservation in Pendleton, Oregon, actually had a uh, fluoride spill, a, a industrial fluoride spill, and it actually affected the children, and my own sister-in-law has fluorosis from that. So, um, you know, we also have to think, too, about if there's a toxic spill that happens, who's going to be affected? It certainly isn't going to be city council. You know, the way I look at it. So we're down to a little over two minutes. We got uh, one more call. We'll uh, let, give another minute to the next call, then we're going to have to sum up. Um, I just want to comment on the talk to, on the spills because there have been incidences within utilities oh. that have had malfunctions of the injection system. Uh, one we've seen in, in Brisbane, Australia, one down in the San Francisco area, and one up in, in Florida, or in Alaska and Florida. So there, people have gotten violently ill from malfunctioning injection systems for the fluoride. So mm -hmm. it can happen. Mm -hmm. Even though they're multi-million dollars. Okay, uh, next caller, you got about oh, 30 seconds if you can make a synopsis of this. Uh, the bottom line is it looks like uh, three of our city leaders are trying to kill us. Randy Leonard, the mayor, and um, uh, who's the other commissioner? Nick Fish and yeah. Sam Adams. Yeah, Fish and Adams. And uh, uh, what do you do when somebody's trying to kill you? Well, you know, how do you defend yourself in this way? Yeah, well, two of them, we don't have to bother voting out of office because they're already gone. So, well, I appreciate the comment. We're down a little over a minute here. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. I'm glad you got through. So, anybody want to sum up here? I mean, there's so much to choose from. Well, I think it's important that the citizens get involved in educating themselves, right going on. to uh, her website and um, Oregon Citizens for, for Safe Water and uh, the many other websites. And she's putting together a great um, Facebook page for, for all the uh, information to come together. It's just important that you get yourself educated, talk to your neighbors, and become very much involved in this because this is your health. You're made up of 60% water, and this is a very important part of your, um, your being. So you need to have a safe and healthy water. All right. Got about 30 seconds Okay, here, uh, real quick, we just need to remember that uh, they cannot control the dose of the fluoride a person takes. They can only control the concentration of the fluoride in the water. That's an important point. And so the more you drink, the higher the dose you have. Um, and if you want to get involved, cleanwaterportland.org, that's the website to go to. If you want um, further information, news, and events, you can also go to nofluoridepdx dot blogspot.com all right so we're down to 12 seconds we don't have much time left thanks for tuning in folks i want to genuflect to the crew you know, new uh new equipment this is tough so uh we're continuing with it we'll see you next week <laughs>